Hey guys, Mark Law of Rational Wine, Consult Wine, 7 Key Wine Concepts. This is part two of my videos talking about grape varieties. In part one, I focused only on the white wine grapes, the most widely grown and commercially available examples around the world. I mentioned the countries and a few regions where they'll mostly be found, and I briefly went into the aromas and flavors of the wines made from these grapes. So in this video, we'll be continuing on into the red wine grapes. Let's get started. Let's start with Cabernet Sauvignon, also referred to as Cab Sav for short, possibly the most important wine grape in the world. Like Chardonnay, it can be found pretty much everywhere that wine is made. Uh, let's start off in Bordeaux in France. You often hear it referred to as the left bank variety. Keep this in mind for later on. You'll also find Cab Sav grown in the United States, especially in California, uh, Chile, here in Australia, Spain, Argentina, Italy, South Africa, even in China as well. Wines made from Cab Sav are typically very deeply colored, very full bodied and highly intense. Almost always black fruit focused, but sometimes it does overlap into the red area. And, but more importantly, it's what's happening behind the scenes of that fruit that uh, really gets people's attention. Think about uh, capsicum, bell pepper, mint or eucalyptus, sage, dried herbs, tobacco, dark flowers, chocolate, coffee, pencil shavings. These are just a few of the descriptors often associated with the top examples of Cab Sav wines around the world. Uh, some of this has to do with oak used during the winemaking process, which adds more complexity to that final wine. And uh, new oak barrels, these are not cheap. So that's just one reason why Cab Sav wines from around the world, uh, the top examples can be very expensive. Uh, and as Cab Sav ages, of course the fruit drops out and those complex secondary and tertiary aromas become more pronounced. And it can be found growing everywhere, but it does typically prefer warmer regions. In places where it can get a bit cooler, sometimes it has trouble ripening. So too much of that green herbaceousness without enough of that ripe fruit to balance it out. While speaking of Cabernet Sauvignon, I should refer to a variety. Its name is Cabernet Franc. Uh, Cabernet Franc is actually a parent of the grape Cabernet Sauvignon. The other parent is actually Sauvignon Blanc. I mentioned this variety in the white grapes video. And uh, some time in history, Cab Franc and Sauv Blanc, they got together and gave birth to this new variety, Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Franc is still around. It's also found in the Bordeaux region in France, as well as in the Loire Valley. Typically, the fruit tends to be more red focused before overlapping into the black area. Uh, it does stay a bit tart and underripe uh, sometimes, and there is also a green character, but it comes across as less uh, fresh, almost like a bruised leaf or cut grass or green capsicum. And some of these savory tones can remind you of leather or even barnyard and compost. But uh, with more modern technology and cleaner winemaking, these kinds of characters seem to be becoming less common and those wines are showing a bit more clean. Next we have Merlot. This is the other great grape of Bordeaux and it is the right bank variety, which is the counterpart of Cab Sat, which is the left bank variety. You also find Merlot growing in the Italy, in the United States, Spain, Australia, Chile. As a single varietal wine, it typically shows a bit more blue fruits. Think of uh, plums and blueberries uh, with a bit of overlap into the red and black categories. It can also show some floral and herbal tones and often some of that sweet spice, uh, that chocolate, which comes from using oak in the winemaking process. But just as important, here we have another example of uh, Molo being used uh, to blend with other varieties. You can see this most often with Cab Sav and Merlot, and with also Cab Franc as well. In fact, this example in my hand, I did a bit of research, 2009 La Segue, it's 60% uh, Merlot, 20 Cab Sav, 20 Cab Franc. Once again, the aim is complexity and balance, with each component providing a piece that the other components might be missing. The fact that these are some of the most expensive wines in the world, that should discourage you from thinking that blended wines can only be cheap wines. 
Just an interesting note, uh, a long time ago Merlot used to be thought of as a very delicious wine until the year 2004. What happened? The movie Sideways came out and in it the main character expressed their passionate dislike for the Merlot grape. And from 2004 you can actually track a downward trend of consumption and growth. I think this is just something interesting to keep in mind, just how susceptible people are to influence whether it be positive or negative. The next grape is Tempranillo. This is the great grape of Spain. It's also found in neighboring Portugal and there's also more than a little bit in Argentina as well. The most classic examples of Tempranillo you'll find, they will come from the Spanish region of Rioja. In terms of fruit character, they lean more towards the red category. It shows an interesting sweet and sour combination of, uh, for example, cherries, strawberries, red currant, and plum. However, a lot of producers will wait a few years for the wines to age before releasing it onto the market. And because of that, those secondary and tertiary characters will become a lot more evident. You can expect dried flowers, tobacco, dill, dry earth, leather, vanilla, coconut, sawdust. Once again, a lot of these components will be due to maturation in oak barrels. Next we have Syrah, also known as Shiraz. It's also made its way all around the world, starting in the Rhone Valley region in France, also in Australia. This one comes from the Barossa Valley region in South Australia. You'll also find Shiraz grown in Spain, in the United States, Argentina, South Africa, Italy, and Chile. Wines made from Syrah are usually very deeply colored and highly intense with uh, black fruits, maybe with a bit of overlap in the red and blue depending on where it's from. But what really distinguishes Syrah from other varieties is a very strong tone of olive and pepper. With maybe a little bit of rosemary and other cooking herbs, it can also get very savoury. You'll hear people talk about cured or smoked meat very often. Some examples might go through oak treatment, which will add more vanilla, chocolate, coconut, sweet spice characters to the wine. In Australia, this is where you'll see it labelled as Shiraz rather than Syrah. It's not uncommon also to see it blended with other grapes, most often uh, Shiraz and Cab Sav, uh, which in France, this will be very hard to find actually, because Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon, they're grown into different regions in France, and interregional blending is not very common over there. Next we have Grenache. This is another grape you will find growing in the Rhone Valley region in France. It's also grown in Spain, in Italy, United States and Australia. Wines made from Grenache typically are very much red fruit focused. Just as important, it's the nature of that red fruit. Very often it's very baked and jammy because Grenache is often grown in the warmer regions of the world. Uh, this uh, nature can translate into other aromas. You might hear people refer to black tea, savoury herbs, dried citrus peel, old leather. Grenache is also another example where blending is common. Often it's blended with Syrah in both France and Australia, along with another grape called Mourvedre. You might hear them being referred to as GSM blends, which of course comes from the first letters of each of these varieties. Now let's talk about Pinot Noir. There is a lot that can be said about Pinot Noir, but I have to keep it brief. So here's a little breakdown. It's very popular all around the world. Uh, we'll start with the Burgundy region and the Champagne region in France. Uh, in the United States, it's especially popular in California and Oregon. There's a lot grown in Germany, in New Zealand. This one comes from the Central Otago region in New Zealand, in the South Island. Italy, Australia, Chile, it is a lot more picky about where it likes to grow. It does not do very well in warm regions. It prefers places where it's cooler, so it's got a longer time frame to develop its flavors. Compared to most of the other red grapes I've mentioned in this video, Pinot Noir wines are typically lighter bodied, uh, lighter in color, but this says nothing about the quality of the wines. Uh, Pinot Noir wines can be some of the most expensive and sought after wines in the world. In terms of flavor, it seems to be very much more red fruit focused. Think about strawberry, cherry, raspberry, but the nature of that fruit can differ 
depending on where it comes from in the world, which is uh, one of the few reasons why it's so popular amongst wine aficionados, because it has the potential to express its origins quite clearly. There is also a very broad range of secondary and tertiary aromas that are associated with Pinot Noir. Dried flowers, popuri, tea leaves, anise, clove, game, leather, mushroom, forest floor. That's a huge range of complexity that uh, this Pinot Noir grape can play with. Now let's talk about Sangiovese. Sangiovese is the great grape of Italy, specifically the central Italian region of Tuscany. There are plantings uh, elsewhere around the world, but this is where I'll be focusing for this video. And uh, you'll find the most classic examples come from the regions of uh, Chianti, this one's a Chianti Classico, and also Montalcino as well. The fruit characters are very much uh, red category centered. Think about uh, sour and tart red cherries and raspberries and cranberries. There might be a bit of overlap into the black category as well. Think about uh, mulberries. Non-fruit characters, often you'll come across uh, dried flowers and roses, uh, herbs and spices like uh, rosemary, thyme and clove, savory characters like leather, animal, balsamic vinegar, dried earth and tar, all very common descriptors for Sangiovese wines. They can be single variety wines. In fact, in Montalcino, it's a legal requirement for wines to be 100% Sangiovese, uh, but they can also be blends. And uh, sometimes it's not obvious from the label, but uh, in this example, I can tell you that uh, it's 80% Sangiovese and 20% it is a local variety that's not grown much anywhere else in the world called Canaiolo. Uh, more modern blends might include uh, blends of Sangiovese with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. And those wines can be very expensive, some of the most collectible wines in the world. The last grape I'll talk about is Malbec. These days it's found mainly in Argentina, however it did originate from France and there are still some significant plantings there. Malbec from Argentina has become quite popular around the world because it's typically very deeply coloured and very full bodied. It is very fruit driven, particularly in the black and blue categories. More premium examples will see oak used, adding another layer of complexity. With more uh, vanilla, cinnamon, chocolate and baking spice. So as a whole package you can see how Malbec from Argentina can appeal to a very wide audience. So that's all I want to talk about in this video. I'll add some timestamps in the description below to each of the varieties individually. Feel free to click on those and uh, have a look. With this and my previous video on white wine grapes, you should have a very broad working knowledge of most of the wines you'll come across in any wine shop or restaurant. Of course, there will come a time where you come across a variety that I have not mentioned here, uh, something you haven't come across before, so take this as an exciting opportunity to explore something new. And with this broad knowledge base, you will, can begin to ask questions like, uh, would this be a full-bodied or a light-bodied wine, or is this going to be more similar to Cab Sav or Pinot Noir. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Send me a message or an email. See you again soon.